Well everybody, did you know that there's a battle going on right now? On the one side you've got Steam right, and its business model. On the other side you've got the kind of Amazon Prime Netflix approach of Game Pass. <clears throat> now there's a, there's a particular idea behind this that sounds appealing. Games for free, you pay £8 a month and you can play any game you like. But there's a few problems with that. <clears throat> And it flies against how developers make their money. So let's talk about that now. Now on the Steam side, I got onto Steam when um, Half-Life 2 came out. And uh, basically you needed Steam installed to play it, which caused a massive backlash. People didn't like being tied to an online service and they kicked off big time. Since then, Steam's kind of won people over. You buy the games online, there's no discs to put in the system. You don't even need a CD, a DVD ROM anymore on your PC. You just download it and play it. Everybody like, seems to like it. <clears throat> you get the DLCs as well, the same way. No problems, developers can release a DLC and have it on the market instantly with very little overheads. It's a win-win situation. And then you've got Game Pass. Now, Game Pass is, uh, you pay us £8 and you can play our Game Pass selection for free. But you don't get, you don't get the DLCs in the newer games. The DLCs are not included. You get a large selection of games you can play, and if you buy them, you get a 10% discount. But you do not get all the DLCs. You've usually got to buy them, and to buy them, you have to buy the game, which means you're paying £8 you know, a month in order to buy games if you want the DLCs which is a bit of a tax, if you think about it, a tax on purchasing games. And you won't save eight quid on the 10% discount, so you're basically paying eight pounds to play a game only to buy it later. On the other hand, it is a try before you buy system, and there's an awful lot of really bad games out there. And the really bad games, you'll just sit there on your games list, just reminding you of how much money you've wasted on them. So on one side, it's, it's a good system, because you can see a game before you lay any money out. On the other side, the DLCs are kind of important, and if they don't include them, then it is really just your paying to view a catalogue. <laughs> so it's kind of like, that's about first. Now, game developers make their money from DLCs. DLCs generate more cash than the game itself. I mean, Epic, their Fortnite, the DLCs released for their Fortnite, allow it to give them give millions to developers in order to put their games on Epic first. So it makes them a huge amount of money. And uh, it, may, it creates a problem for Game Pass, who don't allow players to play the DLCs, because it kind of is at odds with the way the game system's working today, because the game system works today by selling you the game and then selling you DLCs. But if you're not being sold the game and then you can't buy the DLCs, then that's obviously not going to work for many developers. Microsoft's solution, though, is to buy up all the developers, to buy up all the big names, add them to their list, until eventually they end up like Netflix, you know, with lots and lots of um, you know, producers working for them, making TV programs for them. But as you know, lots of other companies have since come up and they're doing quite well, and now Netflix are suffering a little bit, and uh, shows are basically being cancelled. So that kind of business model comes with a risk, and that risk is somebody else might give a new guy a chance, and he might be the next George Lucas. <laughs> so you can't always um, you can't always guarantee that owning all the big names is going to be a safety net for you, especially if people are buying games on your platform. And then you basically found that your competition has got better games than you've got. So, yeah, the, I think the Microsoft model comes with a great deal of risk and it involves spending an awful lot of money. And Microsoft have this nasty habit of having pet projects. And while something's a pet project, they'll throw money at it. But once it stops being a pet project, it pretty much gets abandoned. And um, at that point, you might as well just sell up and move on where Steam has been a fairly reliable uh, system now for over 20 years for me. So I think Steam, Steam's business model works in terms of developers and the players. It supports the DLC market, whereas the um, try-before-you-buy system for Game Pass is more of a gimmick at this point. And unless Microsoft find a way of making it work for developers and gamers alike, um, I don't think it'll be anything more than a gimmick. It'll never be... 
you know, the kind of uh, system that we all enjoy with Steam. Now, admittedly, because there are a lot of really bad games out there, I do find Game Pass interesting. But I do look at the list and I think not much on there for me. Because I'm a PC player who is having to be forced to uh, look at very shallow games made for consoles. And I'm thinking, it's not me. I like games to be much deeper than that. I mean, I'm playing State of Decay 2 right now on Game Pass. Now, would I buy it? Probably not. <laughs> right? Because it is a bit of a shallow game. It's a good game, but it's a bit of a shallow game. So it wouldn't be something on my list. And that applies to a lot of things on Game Pass. And if you were to buy Total War on Game Pass, and if you know anything about Total War, you'll know it's all about the DLCs in the end. right? See, so you get Total War, you'll end up buying it just so you can buy the DLCs. In which case, where would you buy it? Would you buy it on Game Pass at a 10% discount? Or would you buy it on, on Steam? I mean, this is the choice we face. I think most people would buy it on the system that's been uh, reliable and there for them the whole time and not with a company that just cancels things on a whim. Anyway, that's my thoughts on uh, Game Pass versus Steam. I think it's an evolve evolving battle and I do think Microsoft approach of buying everything up will ultimately fail because I've seen other developers do that in the past and they just, they just milk the games to death and then when them games are no longer viable, They've lost their investment, you know, their investment goes with it and they end up selling off the, the uh, franchise to some small company who then makes a really bad job of sequels. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in the next one and uh, let me know what you think.